to assure you personally, as the leader of the government, that uh, it has been to me, and uh, I've regarded it, as a very high honour to the country which I represent as Prime Minister. In a way, this film was um, what you might call separation therapy after Electric Shadows closed in 2006. Um, I thought, now's the time I can go back to documentary filmmaking. Really, I was looking around for a subject and um, just spending a little bit of time in Bathurst, I was really hit on the head by the Chifley idea, you know, I left the town um, after one day they're saying I've got to do this. He's been dead a long time now but people still do remember. It's not the memorials which are stone and metal which will really count in the long run but the memories that you're talking about. We, we had almost no funding for it. <clears throat> the only large lump of funding we got was after it was finished. It was for post post production, the colour grade and for, to pay for the uh, music clearance and the um, archival footage clearance. So uh, it was done without a budget, so it took a long, long time. A lot of weekend trips to Bathurst. It's an amazing experience. Go to Bathurst and you can drive through it and think this is just a, another country town, but just talk to someone at random about Ben Chifley and you'll get something that's amazing. Yes, I was shot, over, shot and edited over something like a two year period. I thought it was a really moving story because um, Andrew was saying that he kind of collected the stories that wouldn't have otherwise been told and I actually thought that was a better picture of the man than it would have been if it was just some kind of boring autobiography. Like I wouldn't have picked up an autobiography about Ben Chifley but that film was really fascinating. I wasn't actually ever thinking of it going into cinemas but uh, a programmer for Greater Union actually said saw the film and said, you should show that for seniors, you know, morning sessions, you know. This fellow from Grady Union um, offered it to a few cinemas for morning sessions and suddenly we had 14 or 15 cinemas showing it at 10 a.m. <laughs> to huge crowds. It was great to see all these feature films that I wasn't necessarily aware of. So finally Canberra is maturing a little bit as a filmmaker centre. 